Hey everyone, welcome to the Whole Body Healing Podcast. I am so, so excited about today's guest, Jamie Rowe. Jamie is your non-conforming sales strategist, teaching entrepreneurs how to do sales in a balanced way. She loves working with creative thinkers who need a system and structure to make sales feel seamless. Her favorite part of business is showing entrepreneurs that when they stop selling themselves short and put themselves first, results happen. Jamie has worked with Fortune 500 CEOs, world-class executives, and small business owners around the world to identify opportunities for growth, innovation, and innovation. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Hey, Georgia. How are you? I'm so good. When I was writing your outline, I was just like question after question because I have so many things I want to chat with you about and ask you. And I know you as a friend and I've worked with you. And so I'm just so excited for you to share your knowledge with us today. Well, I'm excited to be here and I'm ready for the questions. I always <laughs> never, I don't like to have questions like in advance. I'm like, let's do it on the fly. Cause it's <laughs> like more real and authentic. Cause if not, I'll be like, let me read this answer. You know, right. what I mean? I had it planned out <laughs> and that's never good. So yeah, let's do it. Yay. I love it. So for those of you, um, who don't know you, uh, just let's hear a little bit about yourself, your story, how you got started, how you got to where you are today, all that. Sure. I like to call myself a recovering awkward salesperson. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so if you look at the spectrum, you know, there's introverts and extroverts and I lean toward introversion, but I'm kind of like right in the middle, which is called an amavert. So anyone who's listening here, if you feel like, you know, you could, you could work a room if you needed to an event, but you also would be just as happy with sitting in the back of the front of the drink and spending the evening with them. If you're kind of like, feel like you could do either one of those things at night, maybe you're an ambivert and ambiverts are excellent at sales. Anyone's great at sales when we're authentic and show up in the way that we want to. So I originally started my life out um, working with Fortune 100 companies for a big six accounting firm um, and being an analyst in that. I never had to do sales. I just had to sit behind a laptop. It was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> uh, but then I became an entrepreneur and um, I had to actually start selling. And I thought, well, if I'm just really good at something, then people will just flock to me, right? They'll figure out that I'm really good. And that is one strategy and you can do that, but it's a very slow strategy, very organic. Um, and after having <laughs> six businesses, one of my businesses, I remember I was, it was a consulting business and I was sitting across in this big IT CEO guy. And I was like sliding my proposal over. I already had a panic attack in my car. My hands were clammy and sweaty. Like my hands were wet. So, you know, like I gave this proposal to this dude and he's like, why is, why is this paper all crinkled and wet? You know what I mean? And I remember I'm flipping in the back page. Cause like, that's where the price is. It's where everyone always goes to. And I remember like my throat actually started to close up. Like I couldn't even speak. I don't know if anyone's ever gone, if anyone's listening here where you've been so stressed out and afraid and nervous that you actually, your throat starts to close up. So I had that start to happen to me. And he's like, do you want like a drink of water? And I was like, no, no, bye, bye. Um, he did say yes to that proposal, which is still shocking to this day. He's a good man, he's a good man. But um, I decided after that, I'm like, you know what? I need to figure this out. I don't know how to do sales. I'm tired of feeling icky. I'm, so, I'm tired of feeling icky, even not when I don't close, but when I do close. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, that, that was the weird type. There was nothing good about sales. I didn't like thinking about it. I didn't like being in a sales call. I didn't like after the fact, like there's nothing that felt good to me. It felt inauthentic. It felt cheesy. It felt slimy. It felt like, am I manipulating people? Am I sleazy? I mean, like all those yucky words of that used car salesman popped up for me. And so I started to do some research and figure out um, how to authentically sell. And in that process of podcasts, books, coaches, speaking coaches, sales coaches, mindset coaches, um, energy healers, um, I mean, the, the list of stuff that I started research, masculine, feminine energy, like all of these pieces that came up for me, I started to sell as me. I showed up as me, my whole self. And that's when it changed everything. And one of those businesses I had, I did take it from zero to a million in 26 months. So coming from a re recovering awkward salesperson, if you feel like that's where you are, 
it is possible to go from that place of sweaty, clammy hands, panic attacks to building the business of your dreams, the uh, of where you really want to go and get the results that you want. So it's kind of a roundabout way. So that's what I do now in terms of, and I help activate people so that if they do want to sell authentically in their business and they've had it with feeling icky and slimy, I'm there to help assist that and guide you in the right direction. So you can be, so you can be the hero. Hmm, that is so cool. Well, and it's so cool too, where it's, you're of course doing the sales, but it sounds to me too, it's where it's also helping people step into their worth and their power as well. Well, especially within sales, worth comes up. Like, mm -hmm. am I worthy of this? Mm -hmm. Who am I to sell this? Who am I to charge this price? Yeah. Especially when we're doing pricing. So this comes up a lot for men, women, humans. Because right. when we have to put a price on our service, especially instead of if I'm selling this pen, it's, you know, $2 or something. Um, but if I'm selling me, then that just the whole dynamic changes. And sometimes we can spiral with these limiting beliefs. These limiting beliefs is I'm not worth it. Um, uh, oh, there's, there's 15 to 20. This is so crazy. When you look at self-limiting beliefs, the research has been done by Dr. Neff. There's 15 to 20 self-limiting beliefs for that come up for the billions of people on this planet. It's really actually really interesting. So if you have a self-limiting belief, probably, you know, seven other billion people have it. You know what I mean? Which is really interesting. Right. Um, but worthiness comes up for sure quite a lot. I bet. And that was kind of, you know, perhaps this is a part of my next, your next answer too, but I'm curious with the work that you do with people around sales, why, why is it so scary? Why do people have such this block when it comes to, to selling? That's a great question. And I'm going to blame Hollywood today. <laughs> really? I mean, today, you know, it depends on the day, but I mean, think about the movies that have come out, Matilda, um, that, um, Gary Glenn Ross, you know, no coffee, put your coffee down, always be selling ABCs, always be closing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had this stereotypical used car salesman yeah. character that has popped up in so many times in movies has this manipulative, sleazy, slimy person. And uh, unfortunately that has been taken to heart. Like so many other things that are untrue in Hollywood. I mean, look at reality TV. Is it really reality TV? Of course it's not mostly scripted, <laughs> but when you're watching it and you're impressionable at a young age, you believe that it's real. And so a big component of that, I think another component that comes into it, not just Hollywood, but is, is let's bring human design into it. If we could for a moment. Those, those on my list. So I'm glad you are. <laughs> okay. So, so I do specialize in human design. Whenever I work with someone, I always have their human design assessment completed because I'd like to get a better understanding of who they are. What is their blueprint in life? And human design talks about what is your blueprint in life. It is on the woo side. So my unwoo clients, I have woo clients and I have clients that are like, not so much. And I'm like, Hey, I'm from the accounting world. I get that. I, uh, let's meet you here. And everyone else, I'll meet you over here with the woo. So, uh, so for a moment, if we could woo talk about human design is that if you look at human design and it has nine different energy centers in it, and one of the energy centers is the ego, which is also called the heart. The ego talks about if your ego is undefined, meaning if you look at your human design chart and it's white, which is most people, the non-self theme there is that I'm not worthy. And if you look statistically at it, the, um, the ego center is only filled in for 8% of the entire population. So that's saying the rest of the population may have issues with worthiness. So when I look at that, I'm like, oh, obviously that's like one of the very first limiting beliefs that pops up almost every, the first three sales, uh, uh, first three calls, coaching calls is that I just don't feel worthy of this. I, how can I charge this price for this? Um, you know, those things pop up quite a lot. So, so I, I like to go back to data and facts when I'm working with people, but also the emotional component of this, this is a very common self-limiting belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And with that too, I love what you have in your bio where you talk about um, putting your false, yourself first as an entrepreneur. That's when you see results. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how that relates to business? Well, putting yourself first, I see as, um, let's add one more word in there, putting your whole self first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and when we're talking about our whole self first, sometimes, I don't know if anyone's ever felt this in a sales calls, you feel like you need to be someone else. Yeah. And so sometimes we feel like we need to be someone else. We come has our unauthentic self, inauthentic. Is that a word? Unauthentic? I'll look that up later. Anyway, <laughs> it's inauthentic. I'm pretty sure it's, it's Monday and I've only had 60 cups of coffee. <laughs> but if you consider this, if you look at, let's talk about masculine and feminine energy. And when I talk about masculine and feminine, I'm not talking about genders here. Everyone here born, you have equal amounts of masculine energy, equal amounts of feminine energy. Masculine energy is about um, giving, a strong oak tree. Um, And when you're looking at feminine, it's more of the receiving. Mm. Waves, ocean, the power of the water. And so when we come to the table and say we're overly aggressive or manipulative in a sales call, that's a wound of the masculine. You're coming in very hard masculine Mm. and that's only half of you showing up and it's wounded. Okay. If you come up and you don't feel worthy, um, you know, just talking about that, that's actually a feminine wound that pops up. So you're coming in overly in, as we say, the toxic feminine. So when we come aligned as our authentic self, where we're balancing out the masculine and the feminine. So we have that masculine presence. We're grounded. Okay. So the opposite of the freak out jitters before a sales call, grounding yourself into that masculine presence. Mm. And then also being in your radiance, your feminine radiance of knowing your impact. I mean, Georgia, you of all people can change people's lives with your wellness, Mm. with your experience with Lyme disease and what you know about health and wellness. Like you literally change people's lives, knowing, sitting in that impact, feeling that that's being in your feminine radiance and then being grounded. People can feel like people sometimes don't, um, what I notice in sales calls, cause I'll watch recordings. People will record themselves and they hate it. And I was going to say, that sounds so scary, but I know anyone who does that. I saw actually your shoulders collapse a little because you want to protect your heart. Just watching that. That was an um, is is that when people, they, um, yeah, everyone hates being recorded. They don't like to hear their voice. They don't like to hear or see their face or anything like that. Um, but when they're ungrounded is that the prospect knows something's off, Mm. but they don't know necessarily what it is unless they're really super self-aware or they're really intuitive. So as humans, if there's any unknown factors, we get a flag, like a red flag, and there's an unknown And so that means there could be danger. And so Mm -hmm. we say no. Mm -hmm. So probably one of the best things you can do is ground yourself before a sales call. So you feel grounded, connected, dropped in and calm because then your prospect's going to pick up on that too. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to say yes. And those, I have all these little like 1% things you can do to increase your closing rate. And that's one of them. It's just before you go on a call is just ground yourself. If you do crystals, you do a little meditation, if prayers fit for you, just sitting both feet on the ground and just have a moment of silence to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably one of the best things you can do. That's so, that's so great. I love that. And you're so right too. It's, I think people can pick up on that if our energy's off or we're not feeling confident. I mean, I know I've definitely had those calls where I was like, I was just so weird on that. All right. You're like, God, I was so weird and awkward on that. I mean, I, at times I do too. Like, yeah. I, and I felt like something went off, was off. And, and at this point, sometimes when it's off is that I also know that I'm not aligned with that person and it's not a fit. That's a good point too. And I think, and I'm not sure if I learned this for you, from you or somewhere along in all of my like energy and coaching and stuff I've done too. But, um, you know, in those sales too, of having that confidence as well of like, I'm not a fit for everyone and that's okay. And so I think that's a good point there too, where it's, yeah, we don't need to force someone and that isn't a good fit for us and vice versa. 
No, I've had to do that. I mean, last fall I had several come in at once. I was, I feel like sometimes the universe is like, Hey, um, you decide you don't want to work with this type of person, but I'm going to give you three of them just to test. Yes. You. Always, always. And I was like, <laughs> why am I getting these types of people that are yeah. expecting X? And I know that I just, I don't want to do that type of work anymore. Yeah. And so it just kind of drops in. And so, but they were, the sales calls were weird. They were mm-hmm. really uncomfortable. So, so that's something just, I think a lot of sales too is, is slowing down, slowing down to just listen to your mind, right? So you're mm-hmm. thinking, processing, that's the masculine being in your mind, but also listening in your body if something feels good or not. And that's being in the feminine. Mm-hmm. You put those two together and it's like the superpower, your mind and your body together. And then you know exactly if this is the right client for you and the client will know it too. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about how we know if we're in too much of the feminine and in too much of the masculine? Because I think I'm, I'm thinking of it of more of those traditional genders. And I like how you're saying how it's not about men and women. It's more of our feminine and masculine energy. Can you kind of touch on that a little bit more to clarify? Like kind of in terms more... of looking at, when you're looking at the feminine, how do you know if you're not in balance? Yeah. Like, of like, I'm toxic feminine, toxic masculine. Yeah. Like, how do I know I need to kind of ground and have more masculine or have more feminine or yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Those are great questions. So the masculine would be, if you feel really tight, okay. Like you're tense, your body's really tense. You're feeling overly aggressive, overly competitive, overly like, come on, come on, let's go control. Like I think of like, um, like, like a very unpolished young wall street broker from the eighties. Yeah. It's like Wolf overly Wall competitive, yeah. <laughs> like running on a treadmill. There's four clocks behind him, Tokyo, New York, and blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm going to kick everyone's butt, you know, blah, blah, blah. Totally disconnected with his body. Yeah. If you're not like <clears throat> taking care, excuse me, <clears throat> taking care of yourself, eating, drinking, not listening to your body and just angry, intense, and rigid. Yeah. And aggressive. That's going to be, that's a lot of times what we think of used car salesmen is that overly toxic masculine and mm. also overgiving is a, mm. a this is a lot of people this is very confusing they think overgiving is toxic feminine overgiving is toxic masculine mm. so have you ever been where you're with a client and um you're like well here's my package oh um but then i'll throw this in and and i'll throw that in and i'll throw this in and that in, and you're throwing in all these things you're like i don't even want to do these things but i'm just trying to get i'm so desperate you start to feel desperate and you overgive. or even when you've engaged with a client you start over giving you start maybe texting back over weekends when you had made a rule that you don't text clients on weekends would you put discounting prices in that too or is that i would flip that over to the feminine Okay. So let's talk about feminine now. Yeah. Toxic feminine is kind of like loosey goosey. Uh huh. Everything will work out. Um, not feeling that you're, um, uh, that you're not good enough. So that types of worthiness comes up the discounting of price. I'm not worth that. I'm so sorry. The I'm people who say constantly, I'm sorry. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, over and over and over. Um, if you're, um, shoot, I'm trying to think of some of the other, I was just going through the masculine one with someone and I'm so like talking about that right now, but not listening to your body, not listening to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so not being compassionate to yourself. So self-compassion plays a big component, beating yourself up. Why did you do that? God, you were so awkward in that call. Mm-hmm. God, you're, you're never going to be good at this. You just, you suck at sales. Mm-hmm. You know, those types of feelings start coming up. It's that toxic feminine coming up to the, up to the top. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I hear this like kind of similar stuff with, with my clients too. We're just talking about having that awareness. And then I always hear, well, what do I do with it? So if someone's noticing, oh yeah, I do apologize all the time, or I do, you know, text back on weekends. I'm curious too, if you have any more of those like 1% changes and tips that we can do if you're someone that's just like really struggling where like you have this awareness and then you're also really, really struggling with the sale. Any other of those kind of, yeah, one cent, one cent, 1% (laughs) changes that people can implement. Yeah. I would say, um, (laughs) it starts with self-compassion. 
Mm. So let's give an example of one. Um, you were saying like, I, um, oh, I text someone back. Mm -hmm. God, I text someone back and it's Sunday. And I said, I wouldn't do this. And we can start the spiral of you're such an idiot. And you can, why, why, why'd you do that? You made a promise to yourself. And we spiral into that negative. You could just stop. And let's just, first, we're going to name the feeling, which is not always easy for everyone. I have the wheel of feelings. Yes. Georgia. It's so good. It's so funny when I pull out for my really analytical clients, they're like, I don't know what the hell this is, Yeah, but I don't want to talk about anything on this wheel. Right. I'm like, What's so that- funny too, is the first time I saw that, I don't know if I told you this before, but I taught first grade for seven years. And the first time I saw that wheel was like at a professional development for teaching first graders. And I was same thing. I'm like, I don't know what any of these mean or what any of these are or what to do with anything. So point being, yes, I hear you. (laughs) Yeah. So exactly. I think too, is, um, is starting and naming what the feeling is. Yeah. Because when you name the feeling, it actually loses some power. Mm. So I'm so, this is really frustrating right now this feeling right. That I'm having that I texted this client back. I'm feeling very frustrated and I'm, I'm in pain. Mm. I'm really frustrated. I'm mad at myself. I'm Mm. feeling anger. I'm disappointed at myself. So start naming it. Right. So that it kind of feels like a balloon. So that diffuses about a third of it. The next is, is to have some connection with humanity and be like, you know what? Other people probably feel this way too. Other people who have clients and they're trying to build boundaries and they sometimes break them. You know what? I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. And have that connection with humanity. And then that's the other third of the balloon as it starts to deflate. That's for a visual here. And the last third part is, is just being like, you know what? It is going to be okay. You know mm-hmm. what? Next time I don't need to do that. And now that I've learned this lesson and I can figure this out. I've got this. So it's almost like an encouragement cheerleader at the end. So we're going to name the feeling, connect with humanity. We're not alone. And then be like, Hey, you know what? I I'm going to do better next time. I've got this. Hmm. And sometimes that. that could be within a 30 second period of time. It may be, you need to sit down and journal for a few minutes, but, and it's not going to lessen the pain of it. I'm going to be very clear. It's mm-hmm. not going to lessen the pain. Okay, of you texting back and feeling like that you have broken trust with yourself, maybe you because you promised yourself or uh, that you weren't going to do that. All it's going to do is acknowledge the pain, mm-hmm. and so that you can be present with it. Because if not, what's going to happen is, <laughs> how many times have you or someone gone and just numbed out? Be like, oh, what a terrible freaking day! I texted that, spiral down. You go numb out, drugs, alcohol, shopping take your pick, right? Mm -hmm. Go do your numbing activity, whatever that is. And then we're never present in the pain. And then we're just going to spiral back to it. It's just like this washing machine. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say it. Sometimes I know it's hard to sit in the pain of if you blew a sales call, you know what, let's talk about it. Let's put a name on those feelings. You blew that call and it sucked. And you felt the, they, even the prospect called the sales call early and it's like, we're done right? Like we've all been there. It's horrible. Let's sit in this and let's be present with it. And what can we take away from it? This is happening for reasons, not happening to you. It's happening for you and work through those pieces and um, give yourself a little bit of love and self-compassion. I think Mm -hmm. that's more than 1%. That's like a 10% kick. (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. 10% kick up on that one. I like it. And would you say the same thing if we're in that, like, Lucy goosey energy you were talking about. So to, to walk me through, if you're in the Lucy goosey, then. Then is it the same like self-compassion? Yeah. Okay. Like, God, I, I didn't create, I didn't do my sales activities this week that Jamie told me to do. Yeah. God, I'm an yeah. idiot. Those, those were the action items she gave me. Why didn't I do this? I'm going to meet her tomorrow. I know she's going to be nice to me, but I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and so like, or I'm loosey goosey that I didn't do uh, anything that all the sales activities I said I was going to do. I didn't do any of them. I said that, you know, everything will just fall into place or whatever the case is. I think anytime we feel like we're being inadequate, we feel like we're not whatever. 
um, is that it's an opportunity to have self-compassion. Mm. And it's one of the greatest gifts. I wish they taught self-compassion to kids in high school. Yeah. Yeah. But there's so many things that I, that's, that's a whole, <laughs> yeah, we need another as hour. As a past pod. educator. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I'm wondering that too, cause it's, I, I assume you have the same, have had the same sentiment when you were first starting, but it just, it seems like entrepreneurship just brings up all your shit where yeah. it's not just business, but it's also this process in, and with sales specifically of where you have to work on yourself in order to work on the business too. Yes. And there's opportunities, especially in sales to feel really uncomfortable. Oh my God. Yeah. Totally. And all your stuff. If you have any feelings of unworthiness pop at all, even inklings, even like little droplets, little sprinkles of glitter somewhere in like a, a very large bucket, there's a little sprinkle of red glitter at the bottom that you can never get rid of because glitter is like the herpes of the craft world. <laughs> you better want it because it's going to be around for a while. Anyway, so um, if you have a sprinkling of glitter like that, it's going to pop up in some form or another. So what I always say is that's why I know we have our takeoff program. If you're going to start, start early and attack sales first. Sales and time oh. management are the two most important things to tackle when you start a new business, time management and sales. And so um, that's why it's so important. Tackle this first and foremost. Don't push it away. It'll rear its ugly head and get harder and harder the longer you wait. That's such good advice. Yeah, because I think too, there's, there's also that feeling when you first start your business of like, okay, that's, you know, manana, manana. Like I, I don't have clients yet, so I don't need to, or maybe you don't even know it's something to work through um, as well. I'm wondering too, if we can chat about money for a little bit here. I know for probably like my first year with in business, I wouldn't even tell clients my pricing on the phone because it was exactly that like sweaty palm. I get like a chest rash. <laughs> like I, and I now I genuinely thank you to you. I love my sales calls now, which is sounds it's like, it's weird to even hear myself say that out loud because I was the person that was like burning Palo Santo, jumping up and down, like full shakes just a disaster. And I genuinely love my sales calls, but one of the biggest anxieties in that was having to tell my price, which I also just would avoid. So I'm wondering if you can touch on just like money and in your sales calls. And I know, again, that's a whole other like 10 podcasts, but anything there as well. Yes. Um, oh yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> a huge block section, especially when we're talking about money mindset for sure. And, um, there's a few little tricks and I would love to give some tips to some of the people. Here's some more 1% stuff. If you're really struggling to tell people your price first off, first and foremost, don't have a complex price. Hmm. And I think maybe we might've said this some, I was working with someone. They're like, well, I'm $1,215. And I'm like, oh my God, I just fell asleep listening to you tell that price. <laughs> Can we just be 1200? Yeah. Or can we be 1250? Like yeah. what's a cool, fun, sexy number. And if you like numerology, then add some numbers in like eight is for abundance. Five is for change. One is new beginnings. Like, I don't care, pick a number, but make it that it's fun to talk about. Mm. And make sure you don't have to say it's $1,215. It's 1200. Yeah. It's 1200. Yeah. So the other thing to do is a, don't make it complicated. Have some fun with the numbers. Like I know one of my um, mentors, all of her numbers, it's um, two, two, two or $222 or $555 or whatever. Like mm -hmm. have some fun with that and have a story around it. And your people who get numerology will love that. And you'll know your people don't, they know that you're their people too. So that's really fun to do. Um, I would highly suggest getting a money mindset coach just in general, or a sales coach, someone like me to work through some of these issues. Cause there's some fun things you can do with money. Cause in essence, if we look at money, money is neutral. It's an exchange of energy. The emotion we attach to money is purely on our end. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things will come up from childhood and other past things where, uh, again, it's 
tackle it early on, have some fun with it. Another fun exercise, here's another 1% thing. If you're really, really struggling, uh, also with saying your price, one practice with plants. Oh. They don't respond, then move up to a pet. My oh. chihuahua has heard many scripts. He's sitting next to me with his tongue sticking out right now. Um, <laughs> then move to humans when you're practicing saying your price, but you've got to practice it. And if you can't say dollar, say giraffes or monkeys. Mm -hmm. I'm 1,200 giraffes, oh. 1,200 monkeys. I'm 1,200 bananas, right? So we're practicing and we're, we're taking the dollars out if that's a trigger word for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think too is another thing is go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm being straight up. Like I have said to some people, I'm like, spend some time with the therapist and six months come back. Yeah. Like yeah. therapy is like one of my most favorite things. Like I wish on dating apps that instead of showing pictures of yourself, could you just show receipts of your therapy? Oh sessions? my God. Wouldn't that I, be better? I Honestly. so agree. I so agree. Oh, but like, yeah. I'm so with you. I, I saw what, yeah. like right now, like build a dating app that has like testimonials <laughs> from other people who do on dates with them. Yes. Well, I don't even want to talk about that's like, that's a whole other topic. Fun topic. <laughs> but, um, anyway, and we're back. Those are great though. I love to the, the ta like taking the dollars off of it because you're right. Like it's, it's neutral. Yeah. You, yeah. Go oh, ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, please. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm curious of you and your day to day, like, do you have a morning routine or things that you do to just stay? Cause you're one of those people where it's like, I want to be around you all the time. Right. Like you have that like energy and then obviously so good at what you do. So what, what keeps you grounded? What keeps you confident? And of course you're human, but curious of, yeah, just like what's working for you in your daily routine right now. That is a great question. I'm a very ritualistic person. Mm -hmm. I think even putting on my makeup in the morning has a ritual to it. Mm. Um, so I have a very set morning ritual that I do every single morning. And if I can't for some reason or another, I will find a time later in the day. And I've done this for so many years, probably the first couple of years, it was like on and off, but I've done it for so long now it's pretty set. I wake up, I make coffee, I feed my chihuahua. I um, meditate from anywhere from, if it's a really short day, seven, like five to seven minutes, up to 45 minutes, up to an hour 15. I'll even wow. go back to back meditations, like breath work type of work. Yeah. If, especially if I'm working through some heavy pieces, I'm like, I need this time. Yeah. After that, I do um, Oracle cards. Goddess deck from Colette Baron Reed. Love her. And I've rotated through many decks um, throughout the years. That's the one I'm on right now. It's the goddess deck. It's really beautiful. Um, and then I pull one tarot card from a traditional tarot card deck I've had for years that's falling apart. Um, and then I journal or I work on or I write. So I have these um, big sketchbooks. Think of art books at Hobby Lobby. And I don't have any lines. And so I have favorite pens. I use a certain type of pen I've used since I worked at big six accounting firm a million years ago. I still use the same pens to this day. And I just give my space. I give myself time and space to draw, oh. which I am terrible at drawing. When I say drawing, we're talking six figures, like a five-year-old drawing, but I have things that drop in for me that help me build out whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm thinking at that time, or I'm just drawing and other thoughts are coming up. Um, and then a space to just sit and do that type of work. And then that's kind of after that, then my day begins. Hmm. That's so and beautiful. Uh, that's that's more yeah that's morning evening I have a set thing that I do that's so weird so if anyone was, was an insomniac um they'll understand this um when you have insomnia for years I had it I would just be up all night and I found out later it's a thyroid disorder but whatever and so I learned to do this set process so I do this four-step kind of process I do before I go to bed it doesn't matter what the four step process is, but it's a process that I do. And I'm asleep within 30 seconds every night. Ooh. Um, but I also do reading. I am a manifester in human design. 
So I need some downtime. Are you, you're a projector, right? Yeah. So projectors and manifestors need that downtime. So manifesting generators and generators are like golden retriever puppies. They like <laughs> get into bed and fall asleep. They just pass out, right? Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Good. You're laughing. This resonates. Manifestors <laughs> and projectors, we don't have that sacral energy and we need our downtime. Like I'm talking an hour, mm. an hour sitting in my bed. I'm reading or I've got just, I have my accoutrement. I have my things around me. Like if I have a certain like fun, not um, like a water that has strawberries in it or something. Like I've got my, I have my iPad, my phone, I've got my earbuds. I've got like a soft blanket. I've got my stuff next to me. And I just have that downtime so that when I do my four steps, I go to sleep right away. If I don't have that, I, mm. it just kind of messes everything up. So I highly suggest to everyone is finding rituals in life for you. Even if it's the five minutes, how you put your makeup or your mascara on or how you put your clothes on, but making your life sacred. Yeah. Rituals is a really, I think an important self-awareness and bumps up your worthiness of who you are too, because you're slowing down to either decorate yourself or you're slowing down to take care of yourself, to pamper yourself, to prepare for bed, to prepare for the day, to prepare for my clients. I, I have an open solar plexus. So I feel everything. Mm -hmm. So for me to serve my clients in a grounded way, I need to start my day with a grounded day with a grounded mm -hmm. ritual. Mm -hmm. So that and went I down a rabbit hole, but anyway, that's oh no, I think it's so relevant because it's it's exactly that. Where it's if we're not if we're not centered, then yeah, how are we showing up for our clients? And I love the the drawing too. I think the bringing in creativity is so important that as adults we just kind of block out. Um, and so I have I've loved what you've taught me about human design. If someone's never heard of human design. Do you have like a, a intro book or a website that you'd recommend someone go to for that? Um, Jovian Archive, okay. J O V I A N. I'm okay. Gonna that in show notes. Okay. That's always the start. You know, the school, the International School of Human Design, I've taken several classes there. Um, the, and there's tons of people on Instagram. To oh, follow. that's good tonight. Okay. Cool. Yeah, just type in human design hashtag uh, human design, and you'll pick up on a ton of stuff. Jess Fields, like. Uh, my dot human design like there's so many great tools in there and it's pretty new um but it, it, it is really beautiful blueprint of yeah. your life and i use that in conjunction with a, a more um corporate style assessment mm -hmm. um, that you'd see in the corporate world and between the two of those pieces i feel like i see people who they are yeah and i can see their their unique gifts yeah so that we can really lean into those gifts. Cause sometimes mm. as humans, we lean into what we're not good at. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm not good at drawing. Listen to me. What I said earlier, I'm really not good at drawing or I'm not good at this and that's okay. We're human. We're not supposed to be good at everything. But what if we looked at the red lines in human design, people for red lines, those are your gifts given to you on your design date, which is three days before birth, three months before birth. And you may not be aware of them, but your friends know it. Like mm -hmm. if George, if I looked at yours, my guess is you probably have maybe possibly the gate of caring. That means you care very deeply about others. I see that a lot with people in the wellness industry. Mm -hmm. you, that may come naturally to you. You're like, of course I care about you. Of course I care about that may come naturally. You may not know that as a superpower that you have. Mm -hmm. Everyone else knows George is so caring, but mm -hmm. I can see that on your human design. So let's lean into that in your sales process and really lean into yeah. that superpower of who you are because that's authentically who you are. We want you to show up in that space so that you can also better serve your clients. And also you're going to feel a lot more confident coming to that meeting. Oh, so cool. Um, can you tell us more about your high wired mastermind series? Yes. Thank, thank you for asking. So um, there's two. First off, I, my business partner, Jason Hopkins, and also Ron Ben Joseph is involved with this. And that's what's super exciting because between the three of us, the trifecta, it's um, pretty incredible. We, we are building out a way for people to have not only their life, but their business in balance. Because a lot of masterminds just focus on the business. Mm. Like, okay, do this, these sales activities, here's the strategy, here's the tactics. I've been in those yeah. masterminds and they're very great. They're very helpful. But what are all the components of the mindset? 
of your life, your personal life, your personal development, getting to the root cause of why do I not feel worthy? What happened? I'm not saying that we're therapists in this, but Jason is a certified life coach and I'm your practical business strategist. So putting us together and building this together, the results that, anyway, so super excited. So two pieces, one is the takeoff program. If you're pre-revenue, like say I have an idea for a business, or I have only been in business for a short period of time and you're under six figures and you need a supercharger sales for the six month period, that's a great opportunity. It's group and it's one-on-one work. And then that rolls you into, I always say like, it's like the jackets. Do you remember the, uh, these are companies that still do this to the day. Like you get like a, a gold jacket or something. Yeah. At point. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that like real estate or something? Probably. <laughs> no, I can like picture this. Yes. I actually met someone a few years ago and they worked for a franchise and their whole goal was to get the Navy jacket with the gold pins. It's a blazer. <laughs> that meant they were a million over. And I was like, people still do that. <laughs> like, oh, I guess they do. I'm sorry. Anyone who was searching for the jacket, but I like that analogy because for me, that's really funny. So that's like the bronze jacket. The silver jacket is the ascent program. Ascent is six figures to 1 million. So once you've gotten through takeoff, you're over six figures, let's get you to ascent. So then not only leaning into your sales, your authentic voice, all the marketing pieces that in there, and there would be new issues. So Georgia, you probably noticed this when you start your business, there's issues Mm -hmm. as you level up. Every time you level up, it's new and more complex issues, whether you're working with how do I manage my time? Mm -hmm. How do I manage my sales starts? And then when you start hiring people like recruiting, how do I hire the right people? What are my values? What matters? You know, so that's the ascent program up to a million. And then the altitude is 1 million plus. And those are a whole other sets of masterminds. So there's retreats with this in Sedona and also in Colorado, Um, But you can go to my website. I'm not sure you're going to put that in show notes, probably. Yep, that'll be in show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see the two different masterminds. We're only accepting takeoff right now. And also we're accepting into ascent. So the under six figure and then six figure to 1 million. So yeah, thank you for asking. Amazing, of course. Yeah, and so if someone is interested in in your mastermind or maybe just that one-on-one work with you, where can they find you? How do you, how do you do all that? What are your socials? All, all those fun things. Yeah. So um, you can watch some funny, ridiculous reels of me um, <laughs> on Instagram at, at impact um, to income. Just type that in. You'll find me. Um, and then also impact income programs.com has where you can fill an application for the masterminds. Um, that's going to be closing down in the next couple of weeks here. So if you are interested to get in on that, especially with the retreats with the Sedona one coming up, um, please fill out an application now sooner than later. Um, and then we'll have wait lists after that, after April 1st. So, but otherwise, um, yeah, that's probably the best way. I'm not a Facebooker. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, LinkedIn. Yes. You can find me LinkedIn. Jamie Rowe, R-O-W-E is my last name. Perfect. I'll put that all in the show notes. And then last question that um, I asked all my guests, and this is <laughs> a big one. I feel like I'm catching people off guard, but I think it's a good one. <laughs> what advice would you give to your, your younger self? Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um let go of the little stuff. Mm. Sometimes it seems so big, especially I think at high school when like, when I thought things were so big, like I couldn't find the right shoes for prom or something. I thought it was the <laughs> end of the world and no one even looked at them anyway, except for me probably. Yeah. Um, so just letting go of some of those little things. Cause it when in the big picture of it all really doesn't matter. You know, this reminds me of a quote of a woman who, um, she was a, a terminal with breast cancer. So they found it too late. And one of the things that she said, and I don't remember this lady's name, but this just stayed with me for so long. She goes, don't wait to clean your house to have your friends over. Mm. Don't forget to say goodbye. Like you really want to say goodbye to them. Like it could be the last time. Like don't all these little things that we think like, oh, my floors aren't clean. I shouldn't have anyone over to dinner or, oh, yeah, I didn't clean the bathroom. Like who cares? Just 
spend time with people who matter. You know, these little things, they really don't matter. Um, and when it comes down to it, everyone's in their own movie every way. Anyway, yeah. yep. we're just, I'm a cameo for you today. You're a cameo for me. Everyone's mm-hmm. in there. They're thinking of their own shit anyway. Yeah. So everyone's in their own movie. So just don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. So good. Thank you so much for being here today. This was amazing. I feel like I could talk for another hour. Um, just so many drops of wisdom. And I really appreciate you sharing all your knowledge. Oh, well, I appreciate you, Georgia. Thank you so much for having me on. This was awesome. So awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you.